That's what they told you. They told you you needed to be there. You need to have your own. You need to come to the table and bring something. You need to have yeast rolls, breadsticks, salad, unlimited soup. <laughs> It's dark as obsidian And it's light and beautiful and bright as the sun The salt of the earth Fire burning and water dripping How could we be using goddess of magic? She is timeless The people of the desert need a plug She is the wildest woman and let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. Okay, so what you got? What are we doing? We smoking out the window? Today's price? Yeah, it's today's price. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman. And welcome to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew. But returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share that link. All right, so it is time to call the roll. I need all my female identified men to the front of the class for read aloud. All right, so this gatekeepers episode of The Wireless Woman is something like a special edition. I was not scheduled to do this video. However, I was having a conversation with my man when the question came up, who are the sexual gatekeepers? Is it men or is it women? And of course, I was raised like most other women to believe that women are the sexual gatekeepers, that if women don't batten down all of the hatches, that boys will be boys. And of course, a man will be a man. But my views about this have changed recently as I've been going through my own divine feminine energy journey and as the gender roles between men and women have started to change. See, I grew up in a generation where women were taught to believe that they were a prize. Men were expected to woo you and court you and win you. But now that we're in this era of participation trophy masculinity, a lot of men have deemed themselves as being the prize. So now you have goalposts only on one side of the field and those goalposts keep moving. They told you that you needed to be I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T. What you know about me? Remember this? She's got her own thing. That's why I love her. Like literally being an independent woman was being glorified and glamorized. And after you wore yourself out, taking care of yourself, getting degrees, climbing the corporate ladder, now we realize that all of that femininity that we vacated has been taken up by our men.
But see, the problem is there is a price that comes along with being a prize. And now a lot of our men are seeing that they have to pay it. So we were talking about how more and more of these women are coming out like Brittany Renner and Corinne Steffens that are coming up off of these men that are getting bags and clout and recognition off of being able to finesse these men. <laughs> So in the same place where they told you that your standards were too high, you have a lot of men now that are telling you, hey, you should have chose better. But when that table turns, can't we now say, hey, you men need to choose better. You need to vet these women. You need to not just lay down with anyone. If you don't want to end up with a child by this woman, then why did you lay down and have unprotected sex with this woman? right? Like that would naturally be the progression that you would expect men to come to since they are now in the same position to take the same advice that they have given. Now, if you agree or disagree with me, make sure you leave a comment down below. But if you feeling where I'm coming from and you're tracking with this line of logic, go ahead and like this video. Now, if men expect to be pursued and prized by women, it would naturally follow that they would have to be good stewards and managers of their resources, managers of their finances, their time, and it would also follow that they would have to show self-control over their own bodies. I always like to see both sides of everything. So as women, so as women, we have to walk this delicate line between being a soft, alluring, inviting, enchanting presence that attracts a man while also having standards and boundaries and gatekeeping. Now, gatekeeping is a very masculine energy. And I always talk about the Sigma female, where you as a woman have that openness, that tranquil femininity, but you but that you also have these very strict boundaries and standards for what you will and will not accept. Now, if instead of being runaway brides, men would bring the expectations of what they want and look for in partnership back to the center of the field, I think that we could cut back on a lot of the finessing that's going on on both sides. Now, me and my man could not fundamentally agree on this. I mean, it, it almost cost bait a relationship. I'm gonna be honest with you. He was on his side of the situation and I was on my side. But I honestly believe that men are 100% the gatekeepers of sexuality. There are a lot of men that have baby mamas that they're ashamed of, that they would not even want to be seen with in public. So how do you end up in an intimate space with a person that you don't have any physical, emotional, spiritual, or intellectual attract attraction to? How do you end up in that space, in, in a space, in a space so sacred and sharing your strength and your body as a man with a woman that you have no intention toward? And for some odd reason, men are putting it out here like women are finessing them. But the truth of the matter is a lot of women get finessed as well. There would not be any unwanted children if every man that didn't want a child by a particular woman had wrapped it up or either not engaged in the act at all. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a very attractive and good looking woman. I know, I know. But I myself have been turned down tons of times by men. There are some men that had a certain standard for what type of woman they would interact with intimately. And if, and I did not meet that standard and they had no problem telling me no. Ladies, let me know if you have ever shot what you felt like was an easy layup and had it rejected. Because I'm trying to tell these men, this actually happens a lot more than women want to admit or that men are really willing to put forward. I mean, men at this point are more picky about what type of women they want to lay down with than women are picky about the men that they're with. Our men want to be leaders. They want to be looked up to as men. I just feel like when it comes to this department, they really got to take 100% responsibility for themselves. I think that's the first move in the right direction of one, restoring them to the place 
of one, restoring them to the place of leaders in the community that they say they want to be, and two, of allowing women to be in a more passive space of, to be in a more passive space of resting in their femininity. I'm going to talk more about my divine feminine energy journey, but this is how I see it. As I've learned more and more about femininity and what it is to be a woman, I approach it this way. My body is a temple and I know everybody's going to say, yeah, everybody's body is a temple. I get it. But as a woman, your body is physically set up like a temple. You are a temple and a man has to come inside of you to experience God. It is through the portal of your body that a man experiences God. And as you bring forth a child in the image of that man, you make that man a God inside the temple of your body. So if a man worships many gods, that makes him a pagan. That makes him a pagan and he doesn't have any allegiance to one guy as long as he can go to many temples and serve all the guys. Like you wouldn't do that spiritually. Most, most black women that I know are very, very strict when it comes to their religion and their spirituality. So why would you, so why would you open yourself up to a man who shows sexual incontinence and a lack of self-control? who brings offerings to anybody's temple, not even knowing what God they serve. So now turning that whole argument around, why is that same expectation not placed on men when it comes to how they use their bodies? I only say this because they want to be prized. I only say this because they want to rest in their femininity and be pursued by women. I only say this because they're sitting at tables asking women, what do they bring to the table without putting anything on the table? They're telling women, you will not be protected. You will not be provided for unless you come in here and submit to me. So, so biblically speaking, we are supposed to submit one to another, but if my submission is the prerequisite for your protection, that puts you in a place of rest. While I'm out here trying to prove to my, while I'm out here trying to prove to you that I deserve what you have to offer. So if men are going to be the prize, I just believe that men should be the sexual gatekeepers. We can prevent a hundred percent of unwanted pregnancies if men who didn't want to be with a woman outside of just sex would either wrap it up. Or say no. I mean, there are plenty of women who are out here just for, there are plenty of women who are out here just for sexual conquest, just simply for that. But understand that if you are a man who has anything to lose, and by lose, I mean your seed. If this is something you don't want to spread, if your seed is something that you don't want to lose, you don't want to spread, you don't want to see grow up into fruition, then... You can't put yourself in a position to be finessed. I mean, I hate to have to talk to men like they're my daughters. <laughs> I really hate to have to do that. But ultimately, at the end of the day, if you all would take, but ultimately, at the end of the day, if black men would take responsibility for where they're sowing seeds, there wouldn't be any chickens coming back to roost. I just, I just don't see how women are supposed to be responsible for every single solitary facet of black life and black community. Child rearing, economic development, community building, educational pursuits like, can women get a rest? Can women just take a break? So I am putting the brakes on being the sexual gatekeeper for men. Symbol is that. If y'all... <laughs> Y'all getting finessed from here on out. If y'all don't want these kids, don't put them in us. If y'all don't want to take responsibility for us, don't, don't, don't come and try to lay up. Simple as that. Simple as that. Like I told y'all in the last video, two can play that game. Two can play that game. Y'all sitting on all of these media platforms complaining about being finessed. Now you know. Now you know how we feel. If you coming back video after video and you haven't liked nothing and you haven't subscribed to anything, baby, you finessing me. 
Okay, you out here trying to finesse me and I, I will not be finessed. I just said that. I will not be finessed no more, okay? We gonna have to do same time like Smokey because I don't know you, all right? And I'm not getting finessed over here. So if you got anything out of this video, please like it. If you didn't, still like it. That's how that's how I come back here every weekend and get in your face and bother you and finesse you. <laughs> But if you disagree with me, make sure to let me know down in the comments. I do answer all of my comments. Thank you for tuning in to the wireless woman, the plug that don't need a plug. So I'll see you in the next one. Class is now dismissed.